PLM360 provides a fully managed environment for handling item life cycles, including their revisions, featuring access and reviewer permissions and complete traceability of changes. This video is aimed at helping users to understand how life cycles are managed and how an item, such as a component part, can be moved forward to a different life cycle state and revision. In PLM360, we have the concept of revision controlled items and revisioning items. The former is something which has a specific life cycle state or revision, and the latter is an item with a workflow which is used to manage the change of life cycle of the former. So, for an example, an item in the Items and Bombs workspace is revision controlled. These typically represent component parts and subassemblies, and as you see, each has a life cycle state such as production, unreleased, or in design, and a corresponding revision letter. Many of these in this example are at production release A. Conversely, the change orders workspace contains revisioning items. Items in this workspace are workflow controlled, in this case representing our engineering change process. And it's this workflow which manages how items in the Items and Bombs workspace are pushed through their life cycle and their different revisions. Therefore, a revisioning workspace manages the life cycle of items in its corresponding revision controlled workspace. And we'll take a look in a moment at that mechanism in action. Before we do that, there's one more element to this, and that is the lifecycle editor. Now this looks a little like a workflow, but although it acts in conjunction with a workflow, it is different. The lifecycle manager maps out all of the possible lifecycle states an item could be in at any one time, and the sequence that item will pass through those states. Each company's PLM360 environment contains a single lifecycle map, which is effectively a combination of all possible lifecycles any revision controlled item could pass through. The main area at the top of the lifecycle editor outlines that map, and all revisioning workspaces in that environment are listed at the bottom left. In this example, we have just two of these, one which manages engineering changes and the other which manages document changes. Every time a new revision controlled item is created in its corresponding workspace, it's set to the unreleased state. Where it can go from there depends on the revisioning item being applied to it. So, for example, we can see what our options are if a change order is applied to an item by selecting the change order workspace from our list at the bottom left. So, when moving an item forward in its life cycle, in this situation, from its initial unreleased state, we have the option of carrying out an engineering release, directly releasing it to production, or carrying out an initial design release. However, the options for an item subjected to a document change order are different. There's only one option, and that's to release it to an active state. Now it's worth noting at this point that this lifecycle map can be fully configured to exactly match the release scheme of an organisation. So let's look at an example of all of these aspects working together. Let's say we've just created a new revision controlled item in our Items and Bombs workspace, which is a mounting bracket. Here are the details of that bracket, and we can see that as we've only just created it, it's in its unreleased state. It's not yet been subjected to any change orders. However, we now need to move this forward in its life cycle to its initial design release. So the first thing we need to do is create a change order item, which, remember, is a revisioning item. And it's this that will manage this change of revision. In our change orders workspace, we create a new item and add some detail, such as the type of change, the urgency and the reason for the change. We also need 
to select an approvals team who will be responsible for reviewing the change and then signing it off if satisfied. Now for a major engineering change we might want to define a change control board involving several people but in this case I'll just assign myself as an approver and we then save our new change order. Now the next step is to inform the change order what revision controlled item or items we want it to change the life cycle of. Our affected items tab is where we do this and in there we need to add a list of the items to be changed. In this case there's just one item, the bracket, which we can search for or we can select from our list of all such items. We save and exit when we're satisfied our selection is complete and our bracket has then been added. Now when we looked at our lifecycle editor a moment ago, you'll remember there were a number of directions an item under the control of a change order could take. So at this point we need to specify which of those directions, so what type of release, we want our bracket to undergo. To do this we select Edit and pick from our list of options. Now this list is controlled by the map in our lifecycle editor, so it gives us those three options to choose from. We need to select Initial Design Revision and then click Save. We now have our revisioning item, the new change order, which is associated to the revision controlled item, our bracket. So we can now execute the change process, which will change the latter's revision and move it forward in its life cycle. We select the workflow actions tab on the change order item and carry out the first action, which is to submit our change to those assigned with approving it or our change control board. Now you'll notice a lock icon on this state, which means that whilst the approvers are considering the change, no one can modify any of the bracket information. This is to prevent any errors due to such information changing once some of the reviewers have okayed it. And if we take a look at the record for the item we're revising, in the Items and Bombs workspace, the new change order is now associated with it. Clicking on the relevant tab, we can see details of it and the stage it's at and link back to it if required. This means that anyone can see this item is currently undergoing a change, avoiding inappropriate use of it and the errors which could ensue. It also provides future traceability once the change has taken place. And we can also see while we're here that due to the locked stage we're at, we can't change any of the item details. We're only able to add notes at this stage. So we're at the review stage of the process and now all of our approvers can either accept or reject what we're proposing. If there were more than one approver and they were all happy with the change, each one would need to sign off the approve action and the process would cycle around until there was one approver left to decide. He would then be able to sign off the final approval. As I'm the only approver in this case, remember I decided that earlier when creating the change order, I can sign off final approval straight away, moving the workflow to the approved state. Now at this stage, you'll notice our bracket hasn't yet been revised. It's still in its unreleased lifecycle stage. The decision to execute the change has been made, but looking at the workflow in our change order item again, there's still one stage to go. And this is the stage where the change order actually gets implemented. And we know this because of the two gears icon attached to the state box. When we pass through this state in a revisioning items workflow, the revision controlled item gets pushed to the selected stage of its life cycle. So it's only at this point that a new revision of the bracket will be created.
If we take a look at our revision controlled item, our bracket, now that we have progressed the change process through to its conclusion, we can see that its life cycle is at the in design stage and it's now at design revision one. This is our first formal design release and this version is now forever locked as a record of that version. You'll see that we also now have the option to select our working version of this item. So if we want to make further modifications to the bracket in the future, we can access this new working version and then move that forward in its life cycle in the same way once complete. So what options do we have in terms of moving this new working version forward in its life cycle now that we're at in design revision one? Well, let's take a look at our lifecycle editor map in the context of the change orders revisioning workspace. We're at the in design stage, so we can take the bracket through the change order process to design revision two, and then three, and so on if we need further design iterations. Alternatively, we can release it to production, which will move it to production revision A. Again, here, if further modifications are needed, we can create further production iterations to revision B, C and so on. At the end of its life cycle, we then have the option to move it to an obsolete state. And each of these steps are carried out in conjunction with a new change order item in the same way as I've just outlined. And remember that this is the default lifecycle map within PLM 360, but if your lifecycle scheme is different, it's very easy to configure the map to suit. So, lifecycles of items in PLM 360 can be managed in a controlled, traceable way. As a user, you need to remember the concepts of a revision controlled item and a revisioning item, and the relationship between them. It's then a straightforward task to manage the life cycles and revisions of your data.